Hey gang, welcome to the Wilson Combat Channel. Be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell. That way you'll be the first to know when new content drops. Why, you might ask, is an old man sitting here with a pile of guns on the table? Among us gun guys, one of the questions that always comes up is, you know, if we were limited to uh, maybe just one gun or just a small number of guns, what would we actually pick? And it's always an interesting thought exercise. Bill Wilson asked me, if you were limited to five, what would you pick? And after I got done kind of choking on that, and looking at each other saying, well, my first thought would be, I'm damn glad I'm not limited to five. You start thinking there might actually be situations where that would be relevant. Uh, maybe you're assigned to go out of the country or to a different state for a few months for your job, and you can't take your whole collection with you, but you hope to get some shooting in or you're taking them to a vacation place or something like that. Or a friend says, hey, I'm gonna get into guns. If you were gonna buy like a few guns, what would you buy? What should I get? I'm not sure any of us can really answer that for anyone else. It depends on what our specific needs are and it depends a lot also on our own habituation. So what I'll do here is not tell you what you should have uh, but just show you how one guy went through the process of figuring what he needed. First, I carry a gun every day. I would be looking at a good all-around pistol for my particular needs, which over the years have included everything from police duty to simply being an armed citizen. I was an armed citizen before they pinned a badge on me, and I've been one since. I started with a 1911 more than 60 years ago. I'm habituated to that gun. And I found the, particularly in caliber 45 ACP, it's remarkably versatile. It's legendary as a gunfighting pistol. It's slim and flat and very comfortable to carry in the proper leather, even though it's got some weight to it. You get a good accurate one like one of these Wilson Combats, and really that accuracy plus reliability is what you're paying for in prestige guns like this. I have shot guns like this in conventional bullseye shooting, and again, for my needs, I've been a competitive shooter my whole adult life. I've shot them in bullseye matches, police PPC matches, bowling pin matches, where the 45 Auto seems to really be the ideal gun uh, for the handgun events, uh, NRA action pistol at the Bianchi Cup, and others that I'll probably think of when we're done filming. 60 years of familiarity with anything makes it a, a good choice for you. Cartridge-wise, you can get the light target loads that are good for breaking in new shooters and all you need for some games, like uh, Bullseye, for example. You can get your, your standard load, say a 230 grain bullet at uh, 820, 850, 880 feet per second, and it will solve most anti-personnel needs. Uh, I've used these guns to kill hogs, and they, they work very well. If you're worried about something bigger, there are heavy, hard cast, deep penetrating 45 ACP loads you can get that would make this a whole lot more comforting to carry as backup when you were in big bear country. If you need a long range shot, a 185 grain plus P at about 1140 foot seconds has a remarkably flat trajectory. So it's a useful all around item. My second choice, would be something pocket size. Might be a subcompact uh, semi-auto pistol. For my needs, I found the small frame revolver works a little bit better. Uh, my full-time job is teaching firearms. And while the semi-auto pistol dominates today, there are still students with revolvers, and I need to show them how to speed load one, how to run a double action trigger, etc. The smooth profile of the so-called hammerless design, the con totally concealed hammer like this Smith & Wesson 340M&P, will uh, clear a pocket or clear the cuffs uh, as you're drawing from an ankle holster a little bit faster than anything else. And for my particular needs, it serves. Every now and then, I find myself someplace that's infested with rattlesnakes, and I want to carry something real quickly accessible that has snake shot. I have never found a snake shot load I trusted to cycle in a serious caliber semi-automatic pistol. 38 snake shot in one of these, no problem. But again, we're, we're talking tailoring the tool to the task of the given individual. I would certainly want a shotgun. I've had a shotgun since I was a little boy and I don't see any reason for that to change. 
The versatility of these things is legendary. This one is the uh, H70, as done by Scattergun Technologies, Wilson Combat. I got some of these for our patrol cars when I was in charge of firearms for the department with the 14-inch barrels. They handled very, very quickly coming out of the front seat. And the 223 rifles would be in the back when there was a little more time to get to them. If things were so pressing you needed something right now, they might be so pressing you're within shotgun range. We've already discussed the versatility of the shotgun. I kind of like to have handy a 308 caliber rifle, preferably in a semi-automatic. I've had one or another variation of that since I was 19 years old. And for everything from working a roadblock to hunting deer, and uh, some, some larger animals. The 308 rifle in a very accurate uh, AR-15 format like this one from Wilson Combat is gonna do everything you need in terms of distance. It's suitable for a number of different types of shooting matches. And if there ever was an Armageddon, if uh, zombie movies uh, became documentaries or something, I always figured if the zombies came and there was actual urban combat in America, that the zombies would come in vehicles. And you can get some 223 ammo that has good penetration, good tactical penetration on auto bodies. But if you need to turn an automobile into a sieve, a 30 caliber semi-automatic rifle is probably the optimum tool. For the fifth gun, you see a little bit of redundance here. I would want a second copy of whatever was my most used gun. And if I was going to choose a 1911 45 as my primary, the gun that's with me all the time, that's the gun that's probably going to sh get shot the most, wear the most, uh, be the more likely to be going in for renovations or updates or things of that nature. And I would want to have a spare. So that's what one individual would pick. Again, you've got to look at those elements of habituation, need. As the late great instructor Pat Rogers said, the mission drives the gear train. Tailor the tool to the task. Now, we all have different needs. Uh, for example, why didn't I include a high capacity nine millimeter? Heck, I'm carrying one today, but I'm also carrying one in a jurisdiction where it's legal. I go a lot of places that have the 10 round magazine limit. So the eight round uh, Wilson 45 mag is, is not really a handicap there. The nine millimeter, while there may be people who would hunt hogs with it and deer is a little light and I don't think I would. The 45 I know within its range is very capable for those particular animals. Hence that particular balance in my case tipped this way. In your case, it may tip in a different direction. Your task may be different from mine, but You'll find as you're assembling that toolkit, the more versatile each of those tools is, the fewer tools you're ultimately going to need. I'm grateful that my number is not limited to five in real life, and hopefully neither is yours. Stay up with us on the Wilson Combat Channel, and you'll hear a whole lot more different approaches to things, a whole lot more different outlooks, and more, perhaps more to the point for some, you'll see a whole lot more way cool hardware. See you down the road.